Hello, Greensboro. I'm thrilled to be back in beautiful North Carolina with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. That's what you are, American patriots. We need a lot of patriots in this country based on the way we're doing. We need some patriots. Over the past few weeks, we've been on a rocket to the Republican nomination. It's been a rocket. I didn't win Iowa. You won Iowa. We all won Iowa together in a record. We won it in a record double the previous record. That's not bad. New Hampshire in a record double the previous record. We actually got more votes than anybody in the history of the New Hampshire primary. That's pretty good. We just won Nevada. And we got 98% of the votes. Sorry about the 2%. We had an off day. We were missing 2%. The Virgin Islands, we won unanimously. Thank you, Virgin Islands. Beautiful place. Go to the Virgin Islands sometime. And one week ago, we won South Carolina, beating a certain governor by unprecedented numbers and getting double the number of votes of any previous candidate in the history of South Carolina. How about that? And as you know, today we have two contests. We have Missouri and we have the remainder of Michigan. And I will tell you in advance what just happened because we just found out as I was coming up, looks like we're winning 100% of both. 100 percent. Can't we do better than that? And that adds on to last Tuesday's Michigan primary win, which was one with almost 77 percent of the vote, I think, 77 percent, something like that. Next up is Super Tuesday. That's on Tuesday, March 5th. That's in three days from now. And it's time for the great state of North Carolina, don't forget, don't forget, my granddaughter is named Carolina, okay? It's very important. We need each and every one of you to get the patriots from your family, your friends, everybody, get them out and turn them out to vote in record numbers because we have to show What's happening on November 5th? That's when we have to get the worst president in the history of our country the hell out of office. The worst, the most corrupt. With your help, we will win big on Super Tuesday in this November. North Carolina is going to tell crooked Joe Biden, Joe, you're fired. Get out of here. Get out. Boom. Get out. You're fired, Joe done a horrible job. You have done the worst job of any president in history. Get the hell out, Joe. And among my first actions upon taking office will be to do a thing that sort of sounds like common sense, wouldn't you say? Not conservative, not progressive, not liberal. They don't like using liberal anymore. You know that. So let's call them liberal. A thing that I think probably works for the most of the people in this room, seal the border and stop the invasion of our country. Two days ago, I was with Governor Greg Abbott at the Texas border, doing a good job to witness the total devastation that crooked Joe Biden has unleashed. Our border is an open and gushing wound. It's pouring drugs, gangs, terrorists, and millions and millions of illegal aliens into our country. Yet crooked Joe is fighting the state of Texas to stop them from defending our border. They're actually cutting the wire fences so that thousands and thousands of migrants can pour in. But as fast as they cut them, Texas seals them up. It's pretty good. We love Texas. Don't we like Texas now? Well, wow. now we have to do the same thing in Arizona, where the governor's doing nothing. And Gavin Newsom, the new scum, 
the governor of California, sort of governor, because they don't do much, I'll tell you. It's a shame what's happening to that beautiful place. But they, uh, they're pouring into California. They're pouring into Arizona, as you know. But Texas has done a great job. And they have to stop because the people of Arizona don't want it. The people of California don't want it. They don't want it. When I'm president, instead of trying to send Texas a restraining order, I will send them reinforcements. Three years ago, we had the safest and most secure border in U.S. history. We ended catch and release. You know, we had catch and release, right? We'd release them into our country. Now we actually still have catch and release, but we release them in Mexico. Okay, is that better? That's what we had, but they gave it up. We built 571 miles of border wall. We got Mexico to send us 28,000 free of charge soldiers to secure our border. I said, you got you to gotta give us our soldiers. They said, no way. I said, way, you got to give us our soldiers. And they did while we were building the wall. We had the best border. Think of it. Three years ago, we had the safest border in the history of our country. Today, we have the worst border in the history of the world. There's never been a border like this. We had remain in Mexico. You think that was easy to get from Mexico? Mr. President, uh, we'd like to have, you know, millions of people remain in Mexico. That's not that easy. We had it. Safe third agreements, asylum bans, Title 42, and we had a thing called rapid removal. You know what that means, right? We had rapid removal. If you broke in, we caught you, we detained you, and we deported you immediately, just like clockwork. That's what happened. We had the best border in history. But let there be no doubt, this is Joe Biden's invasion. I'm not even sure it's him. I, I don't know. I'm not even sure he knows what the hell's happening. To him. I think it's the people that surround him. They surround that gorgeous, you know, the resolute desk. You know, you pick one of seven desks. When you become president, someday there'll be people in here, that young man right over there, I think he's got, maybe in particular, the beautiful young woman right there. She'll be president. We'll have a woman president uh, before then. You know what? If they cheat on the election, it might be Kamala. I don't think that's too good. I don't think that's too good. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? Wow, what a thought. We better work harder and harder. We, get it. we got enough problems with this guy. The very first bill that Crooked Joe sent to Congress was a bill to turn illegal aliens into voting citizens. Now he's pushing another mass amnesty plan while calling it border security. He calls it border security. Did you see the... Uh, look, he hasn't been to the border in many years, but he hasn't been during his presidency. And then I quietly announced I was going to the border, doing a, a show, Sean Hannity, good man Sean Hannity, I have to tell you. We like Sean Hannity. And we did the show, and we had a side-by-side. -side. He went to an area where there's no problem because of Texas and us. But he went to an, and I went to an area where there was a big problem, very big problem. But he went, and he hasn't been there until he heard that I was going. And then he went, and he wasn't looking too sharp. He wasn't. They couldn't find, where do I stand? He goes, where do I stand? The marker's over there, sir. Oh, where? I don't see it. Where is it? I don't see it. This is the worst. This guy should not be president, but we know that. These women from North Carolina, this is number 116. I don't know where the hell their husbands are. Where are they today? Oh, they're here. Would their husbands please stand up? These guys deserve a medal. Hi, fellow. Nice looking husbands. They're the most, they follow me all over the place. I could go to China and they might follow me. They might. They might not. I don't know. You're looking beautiful. Thank you. Isn't it nice to be in North Carolina where you don't have to travel? So how far, how far away is this from where you live? Two hours. That's not bad. That beats going to California, right? Uh, thank you very much. No, they're unbelievable patriots, and they do. Oh, look, we have front row Joes right here talking about travel. They may have your record beat. I'm not sure. Well, we appreciate, we love front row Joes, and they're at a lot of rallies, I want to tell you that. 
and we're having a good time. But we're really having a good time in a bad time because our country has never been worse. And we're going to straighten it out. We're going to make it great again. And we're going to do it fast. But thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. Great patriots. The bill Joe Biden once passed would give him unlimited power to grant asylum to millions and millions of illegals. In other words, it's an automatic path to citizenship for all of the Biden newcomers. You know they call them newcomers now. Have you heard? Matt Gates, have you heard the new name? They call illegal aliens newcomers. No, you don't like that. Matt doesn't like it. Lauren, no. No, no, they're new. No, this happened yesterday. They're saying the newcomers. Oh, boy, oh, boy. We're going to win by the biggest margins, I think, in history. We have to. Got to watch, watch the cheating. Watch the cheating. But we have a man who's going to watch the cheating. And he's going to be introduced. And I heard him speaking a little while ago, and he happens to come from a place called North Carolina. You know who I'm talking about. He's going to be the head of the Republican Party. He's going to be great. And uh, when, the, when I watched Pennsylvania go, whoa, we're winning. 73% of the vote in, we were winning by 800,000 votes or so. All of a sudden, boom, another one, boom. Georgia, boom. North Carolina was like a, it was a beautiful thing. What happened at that last election is a disgrace, and we're not going to let it happen again. We're not going to let it happen again. You ever notice that they go after the people that want to find out where the cheating was? And by the way, 82 percent of the country understands that it was a rigged election, okay? You can't have a country with that. A poll came out, 82 percent. But they go after the people. They don't go after the people that rigged the election. They go after the people that looking. They're looking for the people that rigged the election. And that's the people they go after. They got away with something. They're never going to get away with it again. Look what they've done to the country. Look at the damage. I always say you could take the 10 worst presidents in history, add them up, and they will not have done the damage that this guy's done. What he's done to our country is horrible. And there's more spirit now than we've ever had in one or two. You know, we did much better the second time. I hate to say it. We got millions and millions of more people the second time. The spirit was unbelievable. First and second, 2016 was an amazing time. 2020, we did much better, getting millions of more votes. I was told if we got the same thing, we couldn't lose. We got millions of more votes. You know that. But we're going to get, uh, this time, spirit-wise, I was asking my people backstage, who were there for both of them. I said, which was the best? They said, this is blowing both of them away. So we got to swamp them, all right? We got to swamp them. This is the opposite of the swamp that we talked. This is a positive swamping. The Biden border bill would turbocharge the invasion, the continued invasion of our country and therefore his plan would totally demolish social security medicare medicaid health care and all public education it's a disaster what he he's taking this country down but we won't let him destroy social security i will not let him crash medicare it's going to crash i will not let him turn our public schools into migrant camps which they're doing you ever see the parks of our cities they're migrant camps and I'll not let them turn the USA into a crime-filled, disease-ridden dumping ground, which is what they're doing. They're dumping. Everybody is being dumped into the United States of America. Every day, Joe Biden is giving aid and comfort to the foreign enemies of the United States. He's actually giving aid. And they don't respect us anymore as a country. Three years ago, we were more respected than ever before. And now they have no respect for us whatsoever. And Putin yesterday is talking about nuclear. Did you hear that, right? Nuclear. He wouldn't be talking about nuclear if I were here. He wouldn't be talking about it. Biden's conduct on our border is by any definition a conspiracy to overthrow the United States of America. You know, he talks about democracy. He is a danger to democracy. He is. Number one, he goes after his political opponent, which nobody's ever done in this country. They do it in third world countries very well. They do it. 
but they're not going to succeed with us. They're not going to succeed. It's making us stronger. It's making us stronger. Biden and his accomplices want to collapse the American system, nullify the will of the actual American voters, and establish a new base of power that gives them control for generations. I don't know. Do you think he really thinks in terms of generations? I don't think so. I don't know. He's got a lot of bad fascists around him, though. That's what they like. They have a perfect, they have a perfect president. He'll do whatever they tell him to do. But Crooked Joe will not succeed with these plans, and he will not get away with these crimes. He'll be tried at the ballot box this November, and he will be judged and convicted by the American people. Right? Under Biden, we now have a brand new category of crime. It's called migrant crime. We have migrant crime. We have criminals that are going around having boxing matches with our police officers. Nobody's ever seen it before. Nobody. We have tough people coming in, and you know that. And they're coming in from jails and prisons. They're emptying out all over the world. Last night, they had four people coming in from the Congo. Where do you live in the Congo? What avenue do you live? Oh, we come from a prison in the Congo. The Congo, we come from, they're coming from Africa, they're coming from Asia, they're coming from all over South America, they're coming from the Middle East, they're coming from China. 29,000 people in the last three months from China. They all happen to be of the age from 18 to 25. What the hell is going on with that? Now, what's going, you know, that's called military fighting age, right? That's called prime fighting age. Dana White of the USC says, I like fighters from 18 to 25. That's what's coming in from China. 18 to 25. Last week, a beautiful 22-year-old nursing student in Georgia, Lakin Riley. I spoke to her parents, the most magnificent people, devastated. And I mean, honestly, I hope they don't hear me say it. They can never be the same. They can never be the same. She was barbarically attacked while she was out on her morning run. She ran to keep herself in great shape. She was a nursing student, the number one best. She's just brutally, you read about it, it's a big story now. She was brutally assaulted, horrifically beaten, kidnapped, and savagely murdered. Almost beyond recognition. Can you imagine this? The monster charged in her death is an illegal alien migrant who was led into the country and released into our communities by crooked Joe Biden. We had him locked out. It was very hard to get into our country three years ago. Now, it's real easy. It's real easy. We mourn her terrible loss, and we send our love to Lakin's family, and they are incredible people, I can tell you that. In Texas a few weeks ago, another illegal alien animal was charged with sadistically murdering a 16-year-old Texas high school cheerleader. Beautiful, beautiful young woman, stabbing her to death in her home, dumping her body in the bathtub to be discovered two hours later by her mother. And last Sunday in Louisiana, a savage Biden migrant criminal was charged for raping a 14-year-old girl by holding a knife to her throat before going on to repeatedly stab a local man in the face, all over his face and his back, while robbing him as he was getting out of his car. This Biden migrant was arrested while standing in the middle of the street, drenched in blood, and it was the blood of his victim. Not one more innocent American life should be lost to migrant crime. Got to stop it. It's a new category, migrant crime. We call it Biden migrant crime, but it's frankly, it's long. So we call it migrant crime. I, come, I came up with that name because I come up with a lot of good names, don't I? But you know, it's migrant crime. It's a whole new category of crime, and it's probably going to be more vicious than anything we've seen. These are vicious people. They're from jails. Many of them are from jails. Many of them are from mental institutions. We, uh, this is what they're dumping into the United States. And I know the people, the leaders of most of these countries. I know them, and they're very streetwise. They're very wise. 
They can't believe Biden's the president. They can't even believe it. And they're taking advantage of our country. They want to clean out their jails. You jails all over the world. You take a look at their prison population. It's way down because they've taken people out of those jails and they've dumped them into our country. They've taken people out of their mental institutions and insane asylums. You know what that is? That's somebody said, what's the difference? I said, insane asylum is like mental institution on steroids. That's silence of the lambs. Did you ever hear of a fine gentleman named Hannibal Lecter? Hannibal Lecter. Does anybody know the name? Please raise your hand. Yes. Well, that's what they have in the same asylums. And they're dumping them into a community near you. <laughs> Lots of luck. This is not good. This is not good. That's why a central question in this election is whether the foreign armies Joe Biden has smuggled across our border will be allowed to stay or whether they will be told to get the hell out of here and go back home. We'll take them back home. Take them back home. In Venezuela, did you just see Maduro? Venezuela, it's uh, unbelievable. Venezuela comes out and said, uh, we're dumping all our criminals into the United States. But the second part, we're never taking them back. Don't ever bring them back. They told, they're not going to tell me that. They're not going to tell me that. We brought, we brought MS-13 back by the thousands, by the thousands. They said, we're not taking them back. You know what Biden said? Oh, they're not taking them back. Oh, oh. The guy can't find his way off a stage. Stairs all over a stage. You've heard this. One, two, three, four. And then you could jump off the front if you have to. And he'll find the only place on a stage where there's no stair. If Joe Biden's illegal alien migrants do not go back to their countries, we will never get our country back. But we're going to take them back because they're not going to go back. We're going to take them back. Fast. It's going to happen quickly. Local police. You know, the local police know every one of them. Somebody said, how are you going to do that? It's not a Washington thing. It's local police. First of all, we're giving our policemen immunity from prosecution because when they stop crime, they get prosecuted. They take away their house, their pension, their family. They lose their wife or husband. On day one of my administration, I will terminate every open border policy of the Biden administration, and we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, because we have no choice. We have no choice. And it's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us, because they know that we are the only ones who can stop them. We will stop them. They are bad people. They use weaponization of Justice Department. Let's go after my political opponent, because I can't speak. I have — I can't communicate. I can't debate. I can't stand in a location that they tell me. I keep falling down when I walk up a flight of stairs. That's why they're weaponizing law enforcement for high-level election interference, where Joe Biden goes after his political opponent. He should drop all charges against me. You know, every one of these 91 counts, they're not 91 counts. They're not legit. They're Biden counts. He worked with Fani, even though it's spelled Fanny, F-A-N-I, Fani. How about that one? How about that one with her lover? Nathan Wade, her lover. Let's go get Trump, because if they go after Trump, he, they can pay him more money. And then she can take beautiful trips on the sea, beautiful trips to foreign islands. Her and her lover, they have such a good time. The guy got paid almost a million dollars, and he never did it before. But he did the other thing before that he did with Fani. He did plenty of that. That's what he's good at, I guess. And this was before, long before they — so they cooked up these charges early. 
They said, let's get a high-level individual so we can charge the state more money. That's what happened. Oh, and then when they get caught, she said, oh, well, I paid him back. Oh, how? In cash. I gave him cash. Really? She gave him cash. By the way, if she gave him cash, that's even worse, because where the hell did she get the cash, right? I paid her back, because if she didn't pay him back, she committed a big crime, because she got money that she gave through the state. So she said she paid him back. She didn't do it. That charge should be dropped. They should all be dropped. And they worked closely with the Department of Justice. You know, he went there for two eight-hour visits and then numerous other visits. But he was there, in there, all day long in the White House, White House Council. This was a scheme of the White House. The Manhattan DA, he took his number one guy, number one guy, and put him into the Manhattan DA's office. Does Matt Gates know that? He put his number one guy into the Manhattan DA's office. That's not the Manhattan DA. That's all being run by the Department of Justice for election interference. Knock out your political opponent. It ain't working. The one thing they didn't know is the people of our country hear about it from me. Most people don't talk about it. When this happens to most people, these kind of things, if they're politicians, they walk up to a microphone and they say, ladies and gentlemen, I will fight for my name and reputation, but right now I'm going back to my family, and you never hear it. With me, we don't do that. We tell you, we tell you what it's all about. And our poll numbers have skyrocketed. I never heard about being indicted before. Being indicted, me? I went to the Wharton School of Finance. I was really good. I did all these things, then they indicted. And it was all like in this little short period of time. I got indicted over a tiny little period of time in my life, tiny little period, four times. That's more than Al Capone, that's more than Alphonse. Did you know who Alphonse Capone is? He was the meanest guy. He was a very volatile mobster in Chicago, affectionately known as Scarface. He was a very nice man. He was not, if he didn't like you at dinner, if he thought you were smiling in a mocking way, you were dead. He got indicted less than I did. He killed lots of people. He killed them just for sport. No, but the people understand it, because I can talk about it. I have a voice. I can talk about it. Uh, we had a thing in Washington, deranged Jack Smith. He's a process. He's a deranged human being. He has a, a huge record of failure, because he goes so far out, and people end up not being convicted. He goes too far. He's a man, he's a, a, just a terrible human being, but he's a deranged person who wants to hurt people, and we, we're hurting him. I'll tell you, we're hurting him. He stinks. That's not the kind of people. You know, being a prosecutor is a very important thing. Being a fair and good prosecutor is a very important thing. But some of these animals, I mean, they are bad. But what they've done is it's all coming out of crooked Joe Biden, because Look, he can't campaign, he can't campaign, he can't speak, he can't walk, he looks like hell. And I will say this, before my indictments, I talk much differently about him. They know, front row Joes know, right? A big change in course. I used to, you know, I had respect for the office of the president. And if you listen to MSDNC and CNN, they're all getting no ratings now, which is great. But if you listen to them, and if you go back a year, they were all saying, well, no, you can never indict Trump on this. They indicted me. You could never indict him on January 6th. They indicted me. You could never indict him on the document hoax. I come under the Presidential Records Act. I'm allowed to do all of that. I'm allowed to do whatever I want. New York Times did a story. Please, 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 Mr. President, please, could we have our boxes? And if the president says no, he doesn't have to give them. But think of this. Think of this. Joe Biden was totally exonerated last week. He's got 10 times the documents, and they're classified. And he's not under the presidential, and they exonerated him. Of course, they said he was grossly incompetent, but we don't have to get into that. But that'll come up, you watch. But we'll, uh, we'll be in very good shape. So a man who totally violated every law in the book on classified documents, who had many of the documents stored in Chinatown. And by the way, did you see those boxes? Those boxes were seriously used. They were used. Those boxes, they had a lot of stuff taken out. They weren't just boxes, Matt. 
Those boxes had stuff coming in and out. Where's Hunter? Where is he? Where's Hunter? No, they had stuff coming in and out, and they were stored in Chinatown. They also had him under his beautiful Corvette. The Corvette was dumping grease all over him. They were in the garage. You know, it's one of those doors that costs very little money that you can take a scissor and cut. Whereas mine were at the great Mar-a-Lago. I had Secret Service all over the place. I had a locked door. You know, they asked me, could I put another lock? I sh we showed them. I said, here's where they're stored. Take a look. They looked. They said, could you put an extra? We had a good lock there. We had Secret Service. They said, could you put an extra lock in? And I said, sure, put an extra lock. They wrote me a letter. Thank you very much. Put an extra lock. And then they raided Mar-a-Lago after that. These are bad, these are bad people. These are bad people. And you're not allowed to do that according to the Fourth Amendment. You can't do that. All of this is only happening because I'm running for president and we're leading in the polls. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having any of this. We wouldn't be having any of this. In the latest morning console poll, we're at 81% in the Republican primary. Although, I, I, I must say, we shouldn't be talking. I haven't heard about this woman for the last five days since, since we beat her actually in her home state so badly. In a record, we beat her in a record. Are you from there? Yes. Since we beat her there and then in Michigan in the largest vote, primary vote in history, we beat her by 42 points. And I haven't heard about her, so I won't even use. People say, don't even talk about her. Don't talk to her. But I have to. When I have some, I have to talk, front row Joes, because she's bad news. I know her very well. She's very average. In the new Emerson Hill poll of the general election, we're crushing Joe Biden in every swing state, including a big lead here in the great state of North Carolina. We're killing it. And in Harvard-Harris, we're leading Crooked Joe in a six-point. That's considered a landslide. And, you know, when I'm leading by six points, it's really much more. I hate to say why. People don't want to get involved. Who are you voting for? None of your business. Anybody that says none of your business is voting for Trump, I hate to say. I shouldn't say that. But when they say it's none of your business, that means they're voting for Trump. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I'm being indicted for you. I am. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I stand before you today, not only as your past and hopefully future president, but as a proud political dissident and as a public enemy of a rogue regime. This is a rogue and dangerous machine. This is a anti-democratic machine. These people are thugs, and they're bullies. And what they've done to people, you heard the hostages singing. That was a hostages. They're the J6 hostages, I call them, because they are hostages. They're policemen, they're firemen, they're accountants. They're lawyers in some cases. They're put in jail for extended periods of time, for very long periods of time. They're hostages. You heard them singing. You heard the spirit that they had? The spirit is unbelievable. That song became the number one song. And you, you can check me on, you know, they always check my facts. The fa oh, look at all that fake news. It's a lot of, that's a lot of fake news back there. Wow. Uh-oh, the red lights are starting to go off. Anytime I start talking, they take the red light off. You know, it's hard when CNN, of course, nobody's watching CNN or MSNBC, but it's hard. When I'm starting getting ready to talk about CNN, the light always, they're very good at it now. They get it off just in time, as I'm about to say that their ratings challenge, they get it off. But there's not too many people watching anymore. You know, the truth is they've lost such credibility that they don't have the same power that they used to have. Never forget our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom.
They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you, and I won't. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you. I just happen to be standing in the way. Oh, it's so pleasant. You know, I had a nice life before this, right? Right? Front row Joes. I had the nicest life. Great company. I did a great job. Built this beautiful company. Some of the best places in the world. Lots of good things. Everybody, I hope, is on truth, because truth is hot. Truth social. It's hot. That's, I call that the, the real voice of America. It's called the real voice of America. It is. Truth is doing great. I hope you go on it. You ask the press. Every one of them are on it. I said to them, who's not on truth? Nobody raised their hand. They hate to do it that way, though. They hate. But they're all on truth, so I hope you are. We are delighted to be joined today by an incredible gentleman who I saw about four years ago. And he went to a town hall meeting. He was not a politician, which I think is his advantage. But he was a great natural speaker, a man who is a very outstanding person. You know, he, uh, he drove a truck. I think it was a forklift. And he went over taxes. It was in a forklift. I love forklifts. They're powered those suckers. They can lift it. What the hell? I watch all these guys, Mark, working out. They're working out. They can never top a forklift, right? I'd rather drive a forklift than lift this way. But he drove it, and he drove it well. But I guess he was complaining about taxes in his town, and he got up and he made a speech. And they didn't care too much about what he said. They just said, this is the greatest speaker we've ever heard. Would you like to run for lieutenant governor or something? And he ran. Look at him, he's laughing. He ran. And he's been an unbelievable lieutenant governor, Mark Robinson. I heard him, and by the way, his wife is much, much more lovely than he is, I can tell you that, and she's my friend. Thank you, darling, for being here. But, you know, I heard him coming in on the plane. I was listening, and I said to the people on the plane, watch this. This is Martin Luther King on steroids, okay? Now, I told that, I told that, I told that to Mark. I said, I think you're better than Martin Luther King. I think you are... Martin Luther King times two. And he looked at me, and I wasn't sure, was he angry because that's a terrible thing to say, or was he complimented? I have never figured it out. But I'm telling you, he's one of, right? When I said that to you, you looked like, I don't know if I like that comment. You should like it, because you are outstanding, and you're going to be the next governor, so that's going to be very cool. Now, you know the fake news will go today, and they'll take that little statement that I make, that little cute statement, and they'll say, he said that this gentleman is better than Martin Luther King. This is a terrible thing. Is he a racist? A bop, a bop, a bop. It'll end up being... I don't care. It doesn't matter. Because the people, the people get it. Mark, the people get it. Thank you, Mark. And that was a great speech you made, too, and I appreciate it very much. Another man who's done unbelievably and he's really respected in Washington. People didn't know him too well in the state, and then I endorsed him, and uh, they got to know him very well, but he was in a little corner of your state, and he was a congressman, and he was a great congressman. People loved him. Matt Gates wanted him. Uh, Jim Jordan wanted him. A lot of great people wanted him. A lot of great people, and I didn't know as much about him as I should have, and I met him and I liked him. And he's been an unbelievable senator. We endorsed him and he won pretty easily too. And just like they liked him in the area where they knew, it's always nice when they love you in a congressional district. Typically it's not good when they don't like you and then you're taking somebody for a higher office, but they loved him and now the entire state loves him. U.S. Senator Ted Budd. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Ted. Great. Doing a great job. Thank you very much, Ted. And then you have Dan Bishop, and I watched his speech. And I said, boy, that's good. And I endorsed him a number of years ago for Congress, and now I guess he's running for Attorney General. And I said, whenever you're ready, 
And uh, he is fantastic. He's fantastic. From day one, he's been fantastic. And I loved your speech. You're going to clean up the streets. You're going to clean up. Can we bring him to New York? I wish he were our attorney general. We have a real bad one in New York. We have one that's highly progressive, and she's killing business and killing everything. They're all fleeing. So I think we're going to maybe move you. Stay here for about a year. We're going to move you into New York. But Dan Bishop is great, and I'm sure that he's going to win that. And he has my total support, my total endorsement, everything else. Thank you, Dan. And a woman who's, who's been a longtime professional and respected by everybody and loved by everybody, Virginia Fox. Virginia, thank you. Loved by everybody. And Lauren, you're going to do fantastically in your district. Lauren Bobert, thank you. Lauren's from afar, but she's here and she's with a friend of hers and a friend of mine, a, a man. By the way, I introduced him the other day in South Carolina and he got a big hand. I said, what's that all about? He happens to be from Florida, but uh, he was there. He's He's been so loyal. He's been such a great friend. He, Follows me not because he likes it, but because he wants to make sure we get elected and he's been incredible But he I introduced a lot of people and some people Did well some people didn't get such a good hand this guy got a tremendous hand because he really is a great patriot Matt Gates and his wife ginger Matt Gates <laughs> True true uh, only true Only true Matt The Speaker of your North Carolina House, Tim Moore. Good, did a good job today. Thank you, Tim. That was a good job you did today. I watched you. And the next congressman from the 6th District, you know, I met him because he's a friend of my son's, and he had a tragic event with his brother. I shouldn't even say it, but he did. With fentanyl, it got him. It got him. His brother passed away recently. And I liked the kid right away, and my son felt was devastated. My son knew him for a long time, and he's a good hunter and all of that. And my son likes hunting. And uh, I like hunting too, but a different kind of hunting. We like hunting for votes. We want to hunt for votes, because we got to win this election. But Addison McDowell is great. Stand up, Addison, please. Good. Good luck. Good luck. Your brother's watching you. He's watching you. And he's proud of you. He said, wow, that guy has gone places. So I think you're going to be very successful and good luck. And your brother is indeed watching you right now. You're North Carolina GOP chair. So I had a choice of a lot of people. And I said, this is the guy because he stopped the steal. He stopped the steal. He stopped. You know, I say, protect the vote. They make ballots. They drop ballots. They do so many things to cheat. Because who can get elected with high taxes, open borders, take away your rifles, take away your guns, no protection for yourself, no entertainment, with bad education policies, everything is woke? They can't. The only way they get elected is to cheat. And they cheat like hell, and they're genius at it. But this man stopped it in North Carolina, and he happens to be your chair, but now he's going to be the GOP chair. He's going on to big things, Michael Watley. Big things. And I said, Michael, I don't need any votes. We got all the votes we need. Just make sure that they don't drop boxes of ballots all over the place. Make sure. He's going to make sure. I, I have great confidence in him. We don't need any votes. We got plenty of votes. And also, fantastic guy. Sheriff Sam Page. Where is the sheriff? He's, oh, he's a, he's a popular guy. Well, you're a popular guy. Look at that. Whoa. Thank you. And I met a lot of sheriffs backstage. It's, you know, we've got almost, almost 100% of law enforcement, as you know, endorsement. Sheriff, thank you very much. But we have sheriffs for Trump. I'm going to mess around with these guys. They're great. Thank you. Sheriff said Trump, thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. Th stand up, please. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.
great people. They're great people. Our law enforcement is great. And as I told you, when we do deportation, they know the real bad ones. They know all the local. They know them by their first name, their second name, and their middle name, wouldn't you say? They know the good ones and the bad ones, and they're going to be working with the federal government on getting them the hell out of here because we can't — no country can sustain what — the abuse that we've been given by this horrible, horrible, worst president in history. On Tuesday, get out and vote for Mark Robinson for governor, Dan Bishop for attorney general, and Virginia Fox, Tim Moore, and Addison McDowell for Congress. They have my complete and total endorsement. Get out there and vote. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. From the very first day that we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden, I believe we're going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. We're going to do it fast. We're going to do it fast. You know, one of the uh, opponents long gone, one of our Republican opponents said, well, I can serve for eight years, and it's going to take eight years. I said, let him get that expression out a little bit longer, and then I'll hit him with it. I said, listen, if it takes eight years, you don't want to vote for that person, because this should take a year. We're going to get everything done in three months, six months, and a year. And we're going to start drilling. We're going to start drill, 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 baby, drill. Day one. You know, he kept our drilling policies because gas was so go going so high in gasoline that he went back and let our drill — you know, he should do the same thing on the border, by the way. But he kept our drilling policies. He started taking it away. The prices shot up. He said, we better go back to Trump's drilling. But you have no idea. We're going to drill. We're going to get prices down so low. Because it all started with their stupid energy policy. The cost of energy went up so high, the cost of oil and gas. In our first term, we appointed over 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. I kept my promise to the workers of North Carolina, and we ended the disaster known as NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and we replaced it with a brand new USMCA, Mexico and Canada, the best trade deal ever made. A giant win for farmers and manufacturers, a tremendous win for North Carolina, as you people tell me all the time. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing in hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our treasury when no other president had gotten even 10 cents from China. And our farmers were a big beneficiary, of which you have a lot of farmers here. But in Iowa, I won by a record number because our farmers realized what we did for them. We got them $50 billion from China. Nobody ever thought it was possible. For our great veterans, we passed VA accountability and VA choice. That was a big deal. On accountability, as you know, you, you had 9,000 people in the Veterans Administration that were sadists and thieves and bad guys, bullies, and you couldn't fire them because of civil service. I had it passed through Congress. We fired 9,000. We're replacing them with great people with heart that love our veterans. And then, and then, choice. It would take six months to get to see a doctor. You couldn't see them. They have great doctors there. Believe me, they have great doctors, but you couldn't get to see them. Anybody that can't see a doctor within 24 hours immediately goes outside, gets a local doctor. We pay the bill. We negotiate, but we pay the bill, and we save many lives. We got a, we got a 92 percent approval rating on the VA. That's the highest it's ever been by 45 points. That's the good news. The bad news, I hear that Biden is dismantling it. He's dismantling choice, and dismantling choice would be a very bad — and he's putting some of the bad people back, okay? I heard that also. We fully rebuilt the U.S. military and created Space Force, and I was the first president in decades who started no new wars. Instead, I brought our troops back home. As you know, we knocked out ISIS. We took ISIS. We knocked them out. We got them out. We got them out. And take your time, fellas. Take your time. 
We have a great person up here. You just take your time. Got plenty of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. These people do such a great job. Thank you. you. You doing okay? He looks good. He looks good to me, I'll tell you. His hands up. Thank you, man. Thank you. Don't forget, they wait for four days outside. And then they get in here and they say, gee, Trump's really no good. This is not worth it. And they, they don't feel so good. But he's great. Thank you, fellas. You take your time. You're more important right now than all of us. He's got a Trump. He's, he's pointing to his hat. You better believe it. Yep. America. You know, these people, the doctors, the medics, first responders, they're incredible people. They're incredible people. They do such a job. You all saw the guy yesterday on the crane coming in and saved the truck. Did you see that? The truck went over the bridge and they dropped the boom and the crane and they saved the driver of the truck who was hanging perilously over the bridge. It was a tough, tough thing. Unbelievable, right? It was an unbelievable job they do. Unbelievable. Because everybody in this room is so important. You know that, right? There's a lot of people in here, by the way. That's a big crowd. You couldn't get... They have 2,000 people outside. We have 2,000 people outside. There's a lot of people. They couldn't get them in. That's great. Thank you. Take good care of them. That's great. That's great. Thank you. You're not going to miss much. Don't worry about it. Thank you, man. You take care of yourself, all right? That's great. Give them a hand, everybody. Incredible. They wait a long time. That's great. And uh, that's really nice. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we, we win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled, and we will restore peace through strength. I will immediately end Joe Biden's war on American energy, and we will quickly end his inflation nightmare. What he's done to prices doesn't matter. By the way, you know the stock market's gone up. There are big professionals, some of the people I know, the biggest, smartest guys on Wall Street. You know why it's going up? Because they think I'm going to win the election. And if we don't win the election, you're going to see what happens. You'll end up in 1929. To lift up North Carolina workers, I will revoke China's most favored nation trade status, and we will impose stiff penalties on China and other abusers. We have trade abusers. Thank you.
Did you see uh, that medic was unbelievable? The way he, he was working, boom, boom, right? That's unbelievable. That's an incredible job. Wow. Unbelievable. That's what we have in this country. It's, like, incredible. That, that's a bad one right there. But I think he's going to be all right. But, boy, that was — you see him working? He was working. He knew what he was doing. He was — he was doing a job to get him going, get that — get that heart going. He wanted to get that heart going. Wow. And his children walked out with him. Can you imagine that? So what a great job. Thank you very much, everybody. Ooh. That was a bad one. I will pass. Doesn't sound as important now, right? But it is. Everything's important. I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. If China or any country makes us pay a 100 or 200 percent tariff, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100 or 200 percent right back. In other words, if you screw us, we will then screw you. It's very easy, very simple. It's a very simple plan. Very simple plan. China charges us 100 percent and 200 percent, and others do. India is very, very, a very big abuser. Uh, Brazil. They charge us. We don't charge them. We were charging them a lot. We took in billions of dollars. We took hundreds of billions from China. We never took in anything. And as the tariffs on foreign countries go up, taxes on American workers and families will come down dramatically because we will be taking in a lot of money. You know, we have this tremendous deficit. We're not going to have much of a deficit. We'll do the Reciprocal Trade Act. That's going to get rid of a big chunk of our deficit. And you won't have to pay a damn thing. You won't have to pay a thing. Don't let the fake news tell you that it costs you. Nope. It doesn't cost you. We will restore law and order in our country. And I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every radical, out-of-control prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist, and reverse enforcement of the law. There is no law. This week, Joe Biden once again declared his intention to strip our police officers of their qualified immunity by passing a radical anti-police bill through Congress. By contrast, I am going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong action on crime. We are going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they have ever been before. Our cities are going in a direction that nobody ever thought possible. We're going to rebuild our cities. We're going to work with Democrat mayors. They're all run by Democrats, but we're going to work with them, and we're going to rebuild our cities. We'll take over our horribly run capital, the capital of our nation, Washington, D.C., and clean up, renovate, and rebuild our capital city so that it no longer is a nightmare of murder and crime, but rather it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. We're going to get rid of the slums. We're going to clean out the slums. We're going to get rid of tent cities all over the beautiful parks. And we're going to make it so if somebody from North Carolina goes to Washington to see the great monuments, they're going to go and they're not going to be they're not going to be killed or beat up or accosted. It's a horrible place right now, what they've done. And as we clean up our capital, we'll clean up and clean out our deep state. We started with Comey. We got Comey out. We got a lot of people out. But that is a deep swamp. We started. We got Comey out, didn't we? Huh? We got him and a lot of others out. But it is deeper than deeper than anybody thought possible. Right, Matt, isn't it? On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. 
And we will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. I will keep men out of women's sports. And we will fully uphold our great and very important but under siege Second Amendment. And I did it for four years. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech and I will secure our elections. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. And all Republican governors should go to that right now. But until then, Republicans must win. We want a landslide. We have to win. We have to win so that it's too big to rig. Too big to rig. <laughs> too big to rig. So if you want to save America, you have to go vote, and you have to vote. I hate to say it. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Vote Republican. Well, I won't tell you. Vote Republican. Remember, the primary is this Tuesday, so go out and vote. We have to send a signal. We have to send a signal. November 5th is the big day. That's when we're going to have this guy walking out. He's destroyed our country. He's destroyed our country, our reputation. He's destroyed everything he touches, and he is indeed. You know, they like to say, Trump is a threat to democracy. Trump. He doesn't even know what it means. His incompetence is a threat to democracy. He's a threat to democracy. He's letting fascists run our country. He's letting communists run our country. Get everyone you know to the polls so we can trounce Haley. If she's, if she's, I haven't heard about her in about a week. Has anybody know? She was going around every show, Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump this and that. That wasn't working too well. No, we don't care about that. We, you have to get out the vote because we have to send big numbers up for November 5th. We have to let them know that we're a freight train and we're going and we're not stopping. We're going to focus all of our time and all of our energy. We will fire crooked Joe Biden. That's what we have to do. Crooked as hell. Crooked. How about what's going on in Congress now? Isn't that something? No, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Joe didn't know about it. He didn't know about it. He didn't know about anything. I didn't know it. I didn't really know about it. Remember when uh, Hunter, remember we used to go, where's Hunter? At least now we know where he is. Where's Hunter? But uh, the famous phone call, right? My father's sitting right here. I want that stuff sent right away. Together, we're taking on some of the most menacing forces and vicious opponents our people have ever seen. But no matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals are, and they are hateful, we are fighting against some of the most vicious people in the world. And they're not outside, they're inside. You know what? If you have a smart president, outside's not a problem. We can handle China, we can handle Russia, we can handle all of them. They don't want to mess around with us. Now they do, because they're toying with us. But you must never forget, this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. This is your home. This is your heritage. And our American liberty is your God-given right. From Asheville to Raleigh, from Wilmington to Winston-Salem, from Greenville to Greensboro. This state was forged by some of the toughest men and some of the strongest women ever to walk the face of the earth. Our American ancestors were backcountry farmers and frontier settlers, woodsmen, craftsmen, workers and warriors who poured their love into this land for their families. They climbed the mountains, fought the battles, conquered the dangers, such danger, tamed the unknown wilderness, built the factories, and gave everything they had to make America into the greatest nation in the history of the world.
But now we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has the highest inflation in 50 years, where banks are collapsing and interest rates are skyrocketing. Likewise, we are a nation where energy costs have reached the highest levels in our history. We are no longer energy independent or energy dominant as we were just a few short years ago. We are a nation that is begging Venezuela and others for oil. Please, please, please help us, Joe Biden says. Yet we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other nation anywhere in the world. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will, re uh, will be reducing their oil production. So sad while at the same time substantially increasing the price. And we met that threat by announcing that we will no longer be drilling for oil in large areas of Alaska or elsewhere on our beautiful land. We are a nation that is consumed by the radical left's Green New Deal, yet everyone knows that the Green News scam is fake and will only lead to our destruction. We are a nation whose leaders are demanding all electric cars, despite the fact that they don't go far, cost too much, and whose batteries are produced in China with materials only available in China when an unlimited amount of gasoline is available inexpensively in the United States, but not available in China. And now we are a nation that wants to make our revered and very powerful army tanks, the best in the world, all electric, so that despite the fact that they are also not able to go far, fewer pollutants will be released into the air as we blast our way through enemy territory in an environmentally friendly way. And they also want to make our fighter jets with a green stamp of energy savings though losing 15% efficiency, but allowing us to keep our enemy's atmosphere clean of emissions as we viciously and unceremoniously attack them at levels never seen before. Who are these fools? Who are these people that would do this to us? Who are these people who would ruin our country? We are a nation that ended oil exploration and production in the United States. Just as the price of oil reached an all-time high, what other country would do such a foolish and self-destructive thing? Can we be energy independent? Can we be energy dominant again? Oh yes, oh yes, and quickly, says President Trump. Oh yes, oh yes, and quickly. We are a nation that surrendered in Afghanistan, leaving dead soldiers. American citizens and $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment in the world behind, and also abandoning Bagram, one of the biggest military bases anywhere in the world and only one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons. New Hampshire, in a record, doubled the previous record. We actually got more votes than anybody in the history of the New Hampshire primary. That's pretty good. We just won Nevada, and we got 98% of the vote. Sorry about the 2%. We had an off day. We were missing 2%. The Virgin Islands, we won unanimously. Thank you, Virgin Islands. Beautiful place. Go to the Virgin Islands sometime. And one week ago, we won South Carolina, beating a certain governor by unprecedented numbers and getting double the number of votes of any previous candidate in the history of South Carolina. How about that? And as you know, today we have two contests. We have Missouri and we have the remainder of Michigan. And I will tell you in advance what just happened because we just found out as I was coming up, looks like we're winning 100% of both, 100%.
100%. Can't we do better than that? And that adds on to last Tuesday's Michigan primary win, which was won with almost 77% of the vote, I think. 77%, something like that. Next up is Super Tuesday. That's on Tuesday, March 5th. That's in three days from now. And it's time for the great state of North Carolina. Don't forget, don't forget, my granddaughter is named Carolina. Okay? It's very important. We need each and every one of you to get the patriots from your family, your friends, everybody. Get them out and turn them out to vote in record numbers because we have to show what's happening on November 5th. That's when we have to get the worst president in the history of our country the hell out of office. The worst, the most corrupt. With your help, we 